back ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to play some more Castlevania The Adventure on the Castlevania Collection, originally published on the Game Boy. Uh, this time I'm playing it with the, oh, watch out there, <laughs> this is the dot matrix uh, filter which recreates the appearance of the original game, ouch, Game Boy screen. Uh, here I'm just showing off some of my deaths. Uh, I'm doing this with some editing so that I can change the audio uh, settings, so hopefully you guys can hear me better. Um, but I did uh, finally manage to play through the rest of this game, so uh, today we'll be showing off how that happens. Now this is a difficult room. It's uh, there's there's spikes coming down at you, and uh, you gotta watch out for these platforms that fall down. You gotta time those jumps just right, and there's more spikes coming up from the bottom. Um, and the whole screen scrolls upward as well, so. And, and jumping from one line to the next is very difficult. Uh, this game is definitely one of the more difficult ones, if not the most difficult. And God help you if you don't have a fully upgraded whip, or an, an upgraded whip, I should say, because even the chain whip does better than uh, an unupgraded one does. It's so much harder. So I finally played through this game and really enjoyed myself all the way through. Uh, well, it was very, very difficult, like I said. Uh, a lot of cursing, a lot of swearing. <laughs> but I did it, and uh, this is how I got her done. These peel bug enemies, if you have a downgraded whip, they will uh, curl up and roll at you. And that's how they get you. So you have to whip twice, otherwise, this is a bit of a big gap, so I didn't uh, give myself enough space there. Now I did edit this together, so I'm not showing off all the deaths, but you will get to see quite a few of them. Uh, there's so many deaths in this game, so many, a lot of trial and error, thanks God for the save system, you know, because without it, you'd be really out of luck, now that's what I mean by they curl up and roll away, you've got the regular whip, which unfortunately you will have a lot, because you either die, or because you got hit by some stray projectile or something, happens all the time, and it's a real pain in the neck, um, all part of what makes this game really difficult. I really wish they'd just retool it a little bit, just add an easy mode where your whip doesn't get downgraded when you get hit. That would have been swell. <laughs> but oh well. I mean, we do have rebirth for that anyway, so it's probably not worth it. But yeah, this is what the actual Game Boy screen looked like back in the day. So, you know, it's a lot of times people say, oh, it was black and white, and it technically was. It was monochromatic. But looking at this is what it looked like. It was like green and dark green. Like just, just green everything. So that was always kind of the, the drawback of the Game Boy that a lot of people don't talk about now is just puke green everywhere. And those things, you, you have to jump over them <laughs> if you can't whip in time. Because of the slow controls, uh, there's a good chance that you uh, won't be able to whip them if there's not enough space. It needs to be a bigger platform. So when they roll away, like that's a bigger platform, so you have a better chance of of landing it there, but I don't need to, so I'm just going to ignore them. Uh, more of these very delicate platforms, you have to make sure you've mastered your late jumps for that, you know, when your pixels off of the object, and because uh, otherwise you ain't got a chance. Same thing here, and we've got a bug here, this is a tricky part, because he rolls off at you, so you have to do, you have to jump, yeah, you're not going to be able to whip it in time. Now if you got an upgraded whip, it's not a big deal, because you kill it with the first hit, it's more collapsible collapsible uh, platforms. The trick with those platforms is you have to wait a little while, like I'm going to wait here just a little bit for more of them to appear, because if you jump on them too soon, then the next one won't appear, or you won't be able to reach it, because if the, if the top of the screen is there, you won't be able to jump. So you have to wait a second sometimes until a clear area appears, and then go for it. Very, very tricky area. And here I am using save. Thank God for save states, man. This game would be totally inaccessible if it wasn't for save states. And it may seem cheap because the only reason I won was because of save states. But hey, look, I'm gonna get what I can out of it. I never would have been able to beat this game. I would have just given up. But because of save states, I was able to enjoy the rest of it. So say what you will about save states. I'm not bragging. But I did beat it, which was all I wanted to do. <laughs> Another death. I died more times than I would care to repeat in this area. What I found out also through many trials is uh, once you climb up to this part, the next spike wall comes out much faster. Uh, but if you die and it starts you back there, 
the spike wall is much, much further back, so it takes much longer. You really don't have a chance of getting across your first time through. You're going to have to die, and, uh, and when it resets, it'll reset much further back for you. Also, you'll have a chance to get an upgrade, so you can actually whip the enemies that pop up in your way. All these enemies are pretty weak, but with the regular whip taking an extra hit, there's just an extra bit of time that uh, is a real pain in the neck. You gotta do some more precision jumping here. Got another enemy that hopefully you've got an upgraded whip to take out in one shot, otherwise it's gonna roll down and hit you, which is also gonna slow you down. But these zigzag areas drove me nuts. Uh, so again, it's just there to slow you down for that spike wall that's coming to get you. So I just ignore that candle there, and then jump across this gap. Then you have to climb up real high to be able to jump across. A pain in the neck, but if you get it right, you shouldn't have a problem. Now I missed it. You can jump high enough to hit that rope, and it gives you a little bit of extra leverage then. Now here's some precision jumping, followed by roping. Now at least that first rope you're going to be at the top of already, so you don't have to climb up it as much. But yeah, and these jumps, while still precise, give you a little more room, and then, of course, collapsible platforms to uh, cap it all off. <laughs> this level really is, and like I said, these enemies are a nightmare, and I'm saving here because I know that I'm most of the way through with just one chunk left, and uh, I don't want to screw up again. Uh, those enemies are a real pain in the ass if you got the downgraded whip. You're probably better off just walking through them. We'll use those invincibility frames, hit recovery, and uh, just pass through them. Ignoring most of the torches, you know. <laughs> Unfortunate, there really isn't enough upgrades. Whip upgrade. There are, by the way, in the first video I said that they were diamonds. They're not diamonds, they're crystals. And uh, there's one last hidden area here. One of the two. <laughs> And, uh, you know, but it actually does have some nice goodies. So this is where you'll want to save on your save states if you make it this far. Because the boss is up next. But yeah, crystals, they're round, are what uh, upgrades your whip. Oh, I wish there was more crystals. I wish there was more hearts. Um, but it's usually still worth, you know, collecting all the coins you can, killing all the enemies you can, just for the extra points. If you, again, got the upgraded whip. Without that, though, you might want to consider just trying to avoid stuff. Now, here's our third boss. He's uh, gargoyle types. Now, he has a uh, flying enemy. He has a maximum uh, range of about 45 degrees. So, if you can get just outside of that 45, you're fine. And obviously, when you hit him, he does uh, get knocked back. So, quick enough. You can hit him before he can hit you. And if you go all the way to this corner, he can't hit you anyway, so... He's actually a pretty easy boss. <laughs> Funny thing is, the... Out of the, five, the four levels in this game, uh, three of the bosses are easy as crap. So, that's the final boss besides Dracula, and uh, this is the final level. <laughs> so, hey, I'll make a quick save state here. I decided to just keep going. I actually really like the theme song here. It sounds kind of like a remix of Vampire Killer. Uh, which is really cool. The, the music in this game is really good. And I like the, the enemy designs are all unique. And the other thing I thought about uh, as I was playing was really everything in this game is unique. Even the levels themselves. Uh, they don't call back to older games as much. They're, they're all new stuff, which I gotta give credit to this. Even uh, Rebirth, I don't think, featured quite as much originality to it as this game did, so, it's it's a small, very challenging, uh, really unfair game, but, uh, it is unique among the cast things, which I gotta give it credit for, and a solid soundtrack, of course, now, make sure you get to this point with an upgraded whip, because if you don't have one, you're totally screwed, ugh, and that got me, see, right now, I, I don't quite know it yet, but I am screwed, I was hoping for another upgrade here, didn't have to, because you see, you have to kill this guy, and the only way to do it with the downgraded whip is you have to back off and hit him. And you can do it, it's not a big deal, but you're about to see the problem with that. Actually, the double-sided problem, I'm actually getting double-teamed right now, because the other one, and there he respawns, so I'm trapped between the rock and a hard place, and uh, really, he just keeps respawning there. So you have to make sure that you get the upgraded whip before you get to him, and there is one in this first stretch. 
And uh, once you get that, um, you can get past him easy enough. Because you gotta hit him four times. But you won't have to back off so much. So you won't respawn. I really hate the respawning. <laughs> I really do. The other Castlevania games didn't have it. And that uh, this is another thing that makes this harder. The little unresponsive controls. Uh, downgrading your whip when you get hit. And, um... Enemies respawning very quickly all contribute to this game's insanely high difficulty level. I would definitely consider it unbeatable if it weren't for the save states. And even with the save states, it's still a really, really tough game. <laughs> really, really tough. See, so yeah, I got the upgraded whip. And I, I also realized you could hit him while just standing at, the, at that level that that ledge is at. Try to get all the coins because I want the upgrade. Yeah, you just hit him four times and you're good. That's that's the best way to get through. If your whip isn't upgraded, uh, you're better off trying to walk through him, which is going to take a lot of hits. This thing always hits me. This is another stretch with these fungus plants. And uh, if you're not good enough to hit those projectiles, they bounce around and it's, it's a real nightmare for you. <laughs> They take quite a few hits too, especially if you you've been hit and you lose your whip upgrade. At this point, I had a good sense of the tempo of the game. I still lost it there, and uh, I'm gonna pay for it. And it doesn't matter if you duck or if you're standing; it'll hit you. And this is the first checkpoint. So if you die at this stage or shortly after. It'll take you back to this screen, which is a very tough screen. And, uh, <laughs> these plant enemies were a real nightmare in this game. Those projectiles just bounce. It's sort of like if a bone pillar was spitting out uh, Medusa heads. This is the best analogy. So it's And if you don't land that jump, man, you're in trouble. <laughs> so at this point I was like, well, I got one life left on this continue. I might as well use it. The hitbox for Christopher is gigantic. It's It's got to be at least 20% larger than a sprite. Because you will see stuff that should pass clear over your head that just doesn't. And enemy attacks also get priority over your own hitbox. So if you're whipping at something and you know the, the two things will be colliding at once, uh, the enemy's hit will register before yours and will knock you back and cancel out your attack. Which, again, sucks, is not fair, and I missed that jump again. <laughs> That's it for the dot matrix filter. Uh, this is me revisiting it a few days later. I, uh, I had work over the weekend, so I couldn't uh, pick up where I left off. This is, is the pixel perfect version with, uh, with some frames. There's uh, two frames. There's one that looks like blood, and, another, and then this one, besides the blank ones. Uh, I decided to stick with black and white because, uh, ouch. The, um, yeah, if you get surrounded like that, you might just want to take the hit because, uh, until you get the upgrade. And once you get the upgrade, uh, don't get hit. Um, but yeah, I decided to go with this. I went with the colorized filter at first, but it's not colorized. It's a lie. <laughs> the, the color's a lie. It just turns it, uh, what would you call it? beige or uh, sepia, it's a sepia tone filter, turns everything brown, not colorized, so it doesn't have different colors for different things, which is, uh, which is pretty bad, it, you'd be better off playing it on like a Game Boy Advance or such an emulator, because they automatically colored a lot of these games, and they actually did have unique colors in there for stuff, you know, I always get hit at this screen, it just always happens, <laughs> no matter what, I just, I couldn't get the tempo of these projectiles, and like I said, the hitbox for Christopher is gigantic, so, uh, you had to destroy those projectiles. If you didn't, you were out of luck. And you don't get any whip upgrades, they're, they're few and far between. Way too few, I, if you get it just right, you can hit the projectile just as it comes out of the mouth, but you really have to get the, the frames right. And you see that projectile didn't even hit me, but it's still registered to hit. It's crazy, and that so did that one. It's a real pain. You have to duck basically for those to go past you. Otherwise, they will hit you. They are too big. 
you really don't have a chance of getting that whip upgrade through. And there I tried to jump and it didn't work. And at this point, I was getting really frustrated. I did find a bit of a tip for this guy. You can walk right past him, and they can't change direction. So he'll just keep firing it that way. And as long as it's far enough off the edge, it won't bounce back. And I always went after this one, primarily for the extra points, but also because uh, there is a whip upgrade and a health upgrade up there. So it seemed kind of beneficial to at least try. And when it respawns, it's facing the other way, so it can't... Of course, the attacks bounce back anyway, and took my whip away. So it was kind of pointless, but I got some extra points out of it, so it wasn't entirely a waste. I probably should have gotten the coin as well, but I figured I had a hell with it. Uh, this is another spike trap area, extremely difficult. Uh, you have to climb up to the top here, wait for that to come down, and jump down. And then as this crosses over at the other platform, jump up. And then jump again. I jumped too early there. When it's rising, you have to time the jump perfectly. And like I said, I edited out a lot of my deaths. I was stuck at this room for a good while. <laughs> but you have to get that second jump perfect. Because these spikes are instant death. No forgiveness at all. And don't jump before. Drop down, then jump. Because if you jump from that raised ledge, you will die on the spikes above. Like I said, even when you don't actually touch things, if they're anywhere near you they will kill you you can just walk off these right here like this which is much easier but it's still uh, it's easy to get uh, frustrated and uh, your, your anxiety levels are high and you will make mistakes at this point in the game so I am abusing the save state feature as much as I can and like I said with a game this difficult I really wouldn't blame anybody else for doing it I mean it's it's a worthy goal for you to uh, you know, if you um, want to beat the game legit as a challenge. If for people looking for a challenge, you can definitely get it here. Just try to beat the game legit without using save states. <laughs> Got more of these sickle guys who are basically standing in for the axe armors of other games. And this guy, of course, he's hit me a couple times. It cost me... I don't think I had a whip upgrade, but if you do, you'll lose it to them. You won't get another whip upgrade. Uh, you'll get some hearts here. They did put a few of them in. And as I can, you can duck under the one, but uh, you have to be careful because they are going to walk up on you. So I'm <laughs> trolling around with my two bits of health, and this is one of the really tough spots. I was stuck here for a good long time. Um, you really have to destroy at least that first projectile to stand a chance. I, I must have died at least eight or nine times here before finally really just getting lucky and destroying that and then hopping over the next one, it was, that was pure luck for me. And then I was able to climb up and get out of there. That's the only chance you got there. And yeah, that's me again with the save states, the same fuck it, save state everything. Uh, I waited till I was up higher, because I didn't want to start, I loaded again. From, you know, the line of fire there. And since we're close to the edge, they're going right off screen, so I don't have to worry too much. Yeah, the sickle throwers were definitely the, uh, the axe armors of the game. It's an interesting design, and they did come back in Rebirth. They all came back in Rebirth, so it was pretty cool to see them, uh, having seen them in Rebirth, knowing that they were original enemies. This area is tricky. You have to get your timing just right with these spikes. Uh, I screwed up originally. Just didn't feel like waiting since I just made a save state, so I loaded. And uh, it still took a few tries to get the timing right. It's, it's just trial and error is the bottom line and <laughs> once you've got the timing down it's really easy but you're going to die until you get the timing down which again is why save states because at this point you'd have been knocked back pretty far if you died you had to do the sickle stuff again I didn't want to do the sickle fighters so <laughs> I used my save states and abused them now these ones they'll hit you but they don't do a ton of damage but I was actually lucky in that the, the knockback effect knocked me up and I caught the ledge. So, it actually worked out in my favor. Now this next area is actually really easy. Um, unfortunately, I lost the footage from it. But you're basically just going to wait for the spikes to come out and then you're just going to walk off them and walk off the edge of the screen. This is the very next screen after that. Uh, and uh, it's where the final boss with Dracula is. 
Okay, and he does trigger just like all the others, and he must have killed me at least 20, 30 times. Okay, you make sure you're off the ledge, and those diagonal ones won't hit you. The fireballs. You can't destroy these fireballs, so don't try. Just duck, hit, duck, hit. It's very tricky because the responsiveness of this game is, again, crap. What I did discover by many attempts at killing Dracula was that if you hit the attack button too quickly, after hitting jump, the attack cancels out the jump. And uh, you just have to memorize the timing. His first form, once you get the timing down, is pretty easy. This bat takes, uh, his second form is a giant bat, takes a lot more work to kill. Um, and it stops every now and then and deploys smaller bats, which again are the most annoying enemies in the game. But I did manage, I, again, I just found that tempo. Once you get in the tempo, it's suddenly easy. And if you can get to the point where you get without losing, without getting hit so you don't lose your whip upgrade, because not only does it make your attacks weaker, but it shortens your range, which is just a huge deterrent uh, detriment when playing these games. But luckily, after several hours of playing, and uh, more or less a week, I pretty much spent a week on this game, uh, not every day, but three out of the five, at least, I was chipping away at it, and finally beat it. It's actually a pretty interesting uh, ending scene here. You get a good look at Christopher and the castle, which actually looks pretty different than it normally does, sinking away in the background as the credits roll. So yeah, I was very, very, very happy to finally clear this game. It was enjoyable. Um, excuse me. It uh, is very challenging and uh, <laughs> well beyond my normal capacities. If I had this on the Game Boy, I never would have come anywhere near beating it. You know, even having the experience I have now, uh, it, it takes years of practicing with these games to get good enough to clear them in one sitting consecutively. I'm nowhere near that. Maybe someday. Maybe someday I'll come back to this and try to clear it without using save states. Uh, if you wait through the credits, it will start a new game. Game B. And, uh, it'll continue from there. Which is fine. Uh, and that's more challenging. Game B is always more challenging. So if this game isn't hard enough, it can get harder. And, uh, so yeah. Not a whole lot of people worked on the game, actually pretty small team. Pretty impressive work, honestly. Even though the, the controls are awful, the frame rate's terrible, but uh, I appreciate it for its uniqueness and surprisingly good soundtrack. And just as a little preamble that there's more to come, Dracula's giant bat form escapes. I killed you already, damn it. Which is of course the hint that there's a sequel, which will be the next game I'll play, which is uh, Belmont's Revenge. So next time we'll have some more Game Boy Castlevania in line. I'll see you guys around. Take it easy.